Our next guest hopes to lead the energy transition, not just in the country, but in Southeast Asia, with the goal of hitting 20 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2030 and a commitment to be net zero by 2050. How close are we really? ASENSE President and CEO Eric Francia joins us live this morning. Eric, hi. Good morning. Welcome back. Hi. Good morning. Hi, Mimi. Good morning. All right. Good feedback. Eric, I want to start with the world is desperately short of affordable, clean energy. How soon before this stops being the news? I mean, even for your group, I, I was looking at your charts and only 39% of your projects are operational. 61% are still under construction. When does it all come together and make a significant dent on energy security and pricing? I think, Mimi, the energy transition is a multi-decade uh, transition. It will be, it will take uh, decades before we can really transition uh, completely or substantively uh, to, to clean energy. So it's not going to happen tomorrow, but we need to start uh, today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and we're taking uh, bold steps. Uh, we, we are already committed to investing 100% of our capital in ASEN uh, into renewable energy and we will be 100% renewables by 2025, and then we will scale up from there. As you mentioned, we've set a bold target of 20 gigawatts of renewables by 2030, but it's gonna take time. It will take time, but um, there was an interesting report by the Rocky Mountain Institute, RMI. It was cited by Bloomberg that predicts renewables will supply a third of global power by 2030. Does that sound possible to you, or maybe not in the Philippines setup? Uh, quite quite possible, uh, but uh, it will require a lot of uh, investments and a lot of push, both policy-wise and from the private sector. Uh, the Philippines uh, itself uh, has targeted or is targeting 35% renewable share of output by 2030 from a base of 22% uh, in 2022. We think it's possible, Mimi, to, to put things into perspective We've got a dependable capacity of renewables of about 7.2 gigawatts uh, today out of the 25 gigawatts of um, installed or dependable capacity uh, nationwide. So that, that accounts for about 29% of capacity, but only 22% of the output. To get to the 35% uh, renewable share of uh, output by 2030, considering that we are also growing 5 to 6% in terms of demand growth every year, mm -hmm. Our internal estimate is we need to grow three to four times mm. from a base of seven gigawatts to about 25 gigawatts. That's about uh, uh, an incremental 18 gigawatts of renewable growth for the balance of the decade. So it's quite a tall order, uh, but we think it can be done. Uh, on our part, on ASEN's part, uh, we will be contributing quite significantly to that. We, we now have about 1.7 gigawatts of renewable capacity in the Philippines, as you mentioned, 60% uh, of that is still under construction, but uh, should be uh, operational most of that in the next uh, six to 12 months. So that's definitely gonna help. And and around 40% of our 20 gigawatt uh, plan or, or goal by 2030 will be in the Philippines. Philippines will remain uh, our largest and uh, single largest and core market for ASEN, uh, which means that we, we aim to, to reach eight gigawatts of renewables by 2030, so hopefully it will be a significant contributor to, to what we believe should be uh, an 18 gigawatt incremental uh, capacity built uh, in the country. Mm -hmm. um, Eric, there was a disclosure by your company this morning, ASEN. Um, it's an update on the joint venture with a Singapore-based Ibvoit. How do you pronounce this? I be vogue. I, I, I be vogue. Okay. Um, yeah. Saying that with all regulatory approvals and conditions having been satisfied, ACRI and I be vogue declared effective the shareholders agreement for the joint venture company that's IBV ASEN Renewables Asia, which will focus on shovel ready projects in Bangladesh, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, and other countries in APAC region with a minimum target operational capacity of 1,000 megawatts. That's pretty big. Uh, th that's right, uh, Mimi. That, that is part of our 20 gigawatt uh, mm -hmm. plan, so that would represent 5% uh, of our overall target. Our our core strategy really is to focus our our organic development efforts both in the Philippines and Australia, where we have an end-to-end -end capability from development to operations. Uh, but outside of those two core markets, uh, as an example, the, the markets that you mentioned in, in our uh, disclosure this morning, uh, one such partnership with IB Vogue 
uh, we, we will work, we will continue to work with partners to, to further our expansion outside of our uh, core uh, market, simply because we, we don't have the bandwidth, uh, the, the capacity to, to do all of this. But we, we do want to participate in the regional or even uh, global uh, energy transition but we don't want to spread ourselves too thinly. So working with partners is the way to go. Are you looking at China, Eric? Because um, not, not, not yet? Not at the moment. Not at, not the, at moment. the moment. We, we've discussed that, we've debated that. Uh, you know, the market is, is, is arguably the largest uh, renewable market, number one or two player. Uh, but we, we chose to, to participate in India, uh, which is more um, uh, attractive, relatively attractive to, to China. So. I guess one large market at a time. Uh, but having said that, we also uh, put a, a small uh, uh, initial investment in, in the US. Uh, about 12 months ago, we signed another joint venture with Pivot Power. So, so we do have these um, uh, initial investments mm -hmm. with joint venture partners, and we'll see. Hopefully, one of them will be scaled up in a similar fashion that we were able to do with Australia, which started as a modest investment, but now has significantly uh, scaled up. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about China because according to a Bloomberg data, a record um, $358 billion was spent on global investments in RE in the first half of the year. China accounted for about half of that. Um, clearly, the world is spending more money on renewable energy. Is that the case for the Philippines? Are, are we a hot, attractive market, a top choice for VCs and private equity investments in renewables? We are increasingly, uh, Mimi, uh, th this is where the action is in Southeast Asia. Mm. Uh, you can see that with where we are doubling down as ASEAN, but uh, we're not alone, obviously. Uh, some of our local um, peers are also uh, accelerating their investments as well as uh, foreign investors, uh, especially with the uh, transition to 100% foreign uh, ownership. I think it's gonna take time. I, I think the the last green energy uh, auction, uh, GIAP2, was a wake-up call for, for everyone, you know, uh, including the industry, where the DOE rightfully put a very big number uh, of about 11 and a half gigawatts of capacity up for grabs uh, for the auction but only 30% was subscribed. So that signaled to, to the market that we need to uh, accelerate uh, the buildup of renewables and be ready for the next uh, uh, auction. Of course, it, it does signal uh, a few things uh, to the rest of the stakeholders, uh, including the transmission capacity, which is still um, lacking, uh, including uh, having the right levels of tariff, uh, including uh, the, the local government, the permitting process and so forth that, that need to be uh, refined uh, or streamlined to, to to hit these aggressive timelines that the DOE has set forth. So I think it's a whole of sector uh, approach. Uh, uh, as I said, it's not going to be easy, but uh, we're we're all uh, on it. Um, Eric, that was my next question. How much easier has it been doing business in this space in the Philippines, thanks to green transition ambitions? I mean, companies and countries have been very vocal about these ambitions. Is it that much easier? I wouldn't say it's easier uh, or, or easy uh, at all. Not uh, it, easy at it's, all. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's uh, it's improved uh, okay. quite a bit. Uh, we we see the the commitment and the hands-on approach of uh, of the DOE. Uh, for example, uh, we also have uh, uh, been active in terms of consultations with with the regulator. Um, a, a lot of uh, collaboration and, and coordination with, with the grid uh, operator. So, so again, uh, none of this is easy with the LGUs uh, uh, as well. So, so I think uh, we, th there's no silver bullet or a one-size-fits-all uh, solution. The EVOS has, uh, is beginning to be implemented, uh, but uh, uh, again, it's, um, there are still some challenges uh, in, that, in that regard. Uh, you got to give credit also for for the government uh, in terms of the push or the help that they provided to to finally sign the the Laguna Lake um, uh, water rights, uh, which came a little over a year after the bid. Uh, so now we are in a good position to to make that a reality because that's a huge opportunity as well to put floating solar uh, on the lake. But again, even with that, we're we still await for DENR to to clarify the the 
um, application for ECC or the environmental uh, certificate. So uh, a lot of things need to be ironed out, but I'm, I'm happy to note that things are moving along uh, despite these uh, challenges. All right, Eric, before we let you go, ASEN reported pretty stellar numbers in the first half of this year, a net income more than doubled to 4.2 billion. What makes you confident you can sustain the momentum? Well, uh, as I said, uh, a lot of the capacity that we have uh, mm -hmm. under construction will be operational. We, we have about 1,100 megawatts of capacity in the Philippines alone, renewable capacity. Uh, about 800 megawatts of that will be operational in the next 6 to 12 months. So that mm -hmm. will uh, sustain our what we call a net selling uh, position to the market. Last year was tough uh, for us. Uh, some of the projects, including our third-party suppliers, were delayed and put us in a net buying position where we had to purchase expensive uh, power from the market to serve our customers. But that has uh, turned in the first half of, of this year, which, which accounted for a significant part of the turnaround. But on top of that, once the 800 out of the 1.1 gigawatts of renewable capacity comes online, that will further solidify uh, our position and be able to contribute to, to the needs of, of the market. All right, and, and final question. I know that you're 71% solar, 24% wind, 2% 2%, um, 2 geothermal, 2% diesel. Mm -hmm. Are you exploring other sources, um, seriously considering maybe hydro or adding nuclear, getting into LNG? I think, well, first of all, it's going to be 100% renewable, so we are not exploring uh, LNG. Okay. Um, we, we, we will focus on solar and wind, and we will diversify into new technologies uh, like floating solar and offshore wind. Uh, we are going to make significantly more investments in uh, energy storage, which is really needed to unlock the potential of renewables, as well as to to, to address the limitations of, of the grid or the transmission line. Uh, so, so that will be uh, our, our, our focus uh, for the next uh, five, 10 years. All right. On that note, Eric, the next five, 10 years sounds very exciting. Thank you very much Mimi. for joining us this morning. Have a great week ahead. Thank you, Mimi. Have a good one. Have a good one.